Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, here recently, I made a video about a first look at Open Media Vault 6. And uh, in the comment section of that video, somebody asked if I could show how to set up an FTP server. So in this video, what we're gonna take a look at is how to enable FTP in o Open Media Vault 6. We're gonna set up some users, some shares, and then add those shares to the FTP service. But before all of that, a word from today's video sponsor. Bookmark.com is a great way to build a unique website in minutes with no coding knowledge required. Just a few clicks and a couple of profile links is all Bookmark.com needs for its AI design assistant to build a website for you. Once the AI has finished up, you can edit the text and the layout to your liking and then publish your new website. Be sure to check out the link in the description to find out more about your new site from Bookmark.com. Okay, so here we are. We're on Open Media Vault 6 here. Uh, here is the dashboard. Now keep in mind, this is still in alpha phase. I just kind of wanted to get ahead of it uh, just so we could have some tutorials ready for Open Media Vault 6 when it does finally uh, release to the public. Uh, I did something very similar with Open Media Vault 5, though I will say I caught it in beta rather than in alpha. But here we go. Here's our dashboard. Uh, and the first thing we want to do, uh, I think the first thing you should always uh, do here is actually go into system, uh, go over here. Oh, to updates. I don't know why I couldn't see that. Uh, go over here to updates um, and then just click download. Uh, click yes, just to make sure, especially while we're in alpha. Uh, here we can see that uh, it is doing some updates. So let's go ahead and let those run. Uh, I'm a big fan of just making sure all your stuff's updated uh, before you start doing things because uh, it may make things work better in the long run. Uh, so this is all kind of doing its thing here. Okay, so this is done now. So we can see that the, the close button has has changed color and that is our indicator. So we'll go ahead and click close. Uh, right now is probably a good time to go ahead and do a reboot. So go ahead and do that and let's jump back into this. Okay, so now that we're back at our dashboard, what we can do is come over here to services, go to FTP, uh, go to settings. Oh, it's gonna do that again, isn't it? So again, this is still an alpha and sometimes I've noticed in Chrome, uh, I can access uh, different things and other times, uh, I can't, and that's just one of those weird things that I hope they fix uh, here soon. Let's see if I can get in there now. Nope. All right, so let's open up Edge uh, because I've noticed that I don't have any issues uh, when I use Edge. And again, you'll notice that our, our dashboard isn't working. Again, I think that's an alpha issue. So let's go over here to services. Let's go to FTP. Let's go to settings. Uh, make sure that you enable uh, FTP up here. And then for security reasons, uh, always change port uh, 21 for FTP to something else. Make sure that it's not a port that's going to be used by something else. So don't don't change it to like 22 because that's SSH. So things like that. Just um, uh, just pick another port. Uh, I'm going to call it um, uh, 9675. We're going to call that our FTP port moving forward. <clears throat> uh, so then you can come through here. Uh, I would not advise turning on anonymous FTP. I feel like that's just a bad idea for security reasons. Uh, permitting root login. Again, uh, I wouldn't. Uh, requiring a valid shell, that's up to you. Bandwidth restriction, uh, if you want to make sure that nobody can take up all of your bandwidth, uh, you could put that in place. Uh, passive FTP, you may want to you may want to enable that for different reasons. Um, but basically at this point, you can just scroll down, click save. It says it's updated there, and then we should get a yellow bar up here at the top. We'll go ahead and click that and click uh, yes, I do want to do that. All right, <clears throat> so now our FTP is enabled. So if we come back to our dashboard, uh, let's just go ahead and enable. I wish... There was a check all for this, but there's not, whatever. Click save, there we go. Um, and over here we can see the service status uh, FTP is running, so that's good. So the next thing we gotta do is kind of figure out what we wanna do first, whether it's set up users or shares. I'm gonna set up users first, uh, just so we've got them. So let's open up a notepad and um, <clears throat> let's just set up some users here. So we'll say uh, Bob, Tim, uh, Tracy, and um, uh, Sam. Okay, so we've got, let's just use those four names uh, for the sake of this. I'm just gonna drag this out of the way so it's not there right now. User management, we're gonna add some users here. We can see that I've got an FTP user. That was just me testing some stuff earlier on. So I'm gonna go ahead and create, um, and I'm gonna say Bob, and then we're gonna give him a password, and then we'll go ahead and make, put that in. Uh, shell is enabled there. Uh, you can change what what access or what shell access they've got. Um, groups, if you want to put them into groups, you could do that. Um, SSH, SSH public keys, if they've got those available, uh, you could put that in there. And you can also check whether or not you want to allow or disallow account modification. So uh, I'm not going to do anything else in there, but I'm going to click save. 
Um, and then I'm gonna add uh, the rest of my users here just real quick. Uh, same process for all of it. Okay, so now we've got all of our users created. So uh, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and click the uh, yellow apply uh, button there up at the top, just so we make sure that all of our users are then created. Okay, so at this point you could, there's a couple of things you could do. You could set up groups if you wanted to have, you know, maybe a marketing group and a, and a development group and things like that. Um, we're not gonna do that in this, but just know that you could. Uh, the next thing I do wanna do though, uh, is go over here uh, actually to uh, storage and then into um, shared folders. So I've got an FTP folder and I've got a files folder. Now we set up files in the first video. Again, FTP was just kind of me messing around, uh, but that's gonna come into play here in just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is actually create some new, uh, some new shares. Uh, I'm gonna name all of these shares um, after individual users. Um, and that's gonna make sense here uh, pretty soon. Now you, you can adjust this to uh, whatever permissions you want. Of course, administrators will always have read and write access. Um, and then you can say re users no access, read only, read and write, uh, users read only, uh, read and write, read and write, and then read, uh, read only over here. So you can kind of pick and choose how you wanna handle uh, your permissions for individual folders here. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and click save. We're just gonna leave all of this uh, as it stands. And again, we're gonna go ahead and create the rest of these. Oops, Tim, Tim. Like so, same thing, save. Now this file system, I guess I should have mentioned that, this file system was created in the previous video as well. So definitely take a look at that if you need to know how to set up file systems. Um, so again, we're gonna go click save, one more. Uh, we're gonna call this one Sam. And click save. So now we've got all of our uh, shared folders set up in uh, under our file systems. So we're gonna go ahead and click save there up at the top as well. Now that we've got that step complete. <clears throat> okay, so applied the configuration changes, that's good. Uh, so next we'll go to FTP over here under services. Uh, and then we're gonna go to shares. And here again, we can see that we've got the files and the FTP folders uh, shared from previously. So we're gonna add uh, another shared folder like so. And this is, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're just gonna select um, our different uh, user shares that we've created here. Okay, so now that we've got these shares created, we're gonna click apply and then click yes. All right, so now let's go back over to our users. And let's let's go here over here to Bob. And let's uh, go up here where it says shared folder privileges. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And from here, I can go into each folder and give him access or, or or not give him access to any of the folders that I want to. So I wanna give Bob access to his folder. Um, and then maybe maybe I give him uh, read-only access to files and I give him read and write access to FTP and I give him no access to any of the other user shares. So I'll go ahead and click on save. And we're just gonna go ahead and go through the same process uh, for Bob, of course, Sam doesn't need any permissions there. Uh, for files, uh, let's go ahead and do the same thing. Uh, Sam gets read and write, um, but for, for Sam's folder, but not for Tim and Tracy. <clears throat> oh, I sure screwed that up. Let's edit that. Oh, I can't edit that. That's interesting. All right, well, um, so I, I, I named that one time instead of Tim. I'm sure I'll catch that in the edit as well. Uh, so let's go ahead. I say no access, read and write, read only, no access, read and write, and no access. Um, and then we'll do the same thing for Tracy here. Uh, no access, read and write, read only, no access, no access, uh, read and write. Make sure that we've got Tracy up there, that's good. And then for this FTP user, we're gonna say uh, FTP user gets access to absolutely everything. We're gonna say that that's my account. Um, so basically once we've got that, we can come up here, click apply up in the yellow bar and click yes. Okay, so at this point, we have all of our users set up. We've got all of our shares set up and we've got users assigned to shares. Now, uh, here's the thing. Uh, your ISP may actually block FTP traffic. So uh, making this publicly available, maybe um, it's gonna be kind of user dependent based on your ISP and that sort of thing. So I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, what we're gonna do is just uh, make this available on a local network here. So uh, next thing I wanna do is go ahead and open up an FTP client. I'm gonna use FileZilla. 
uh, just because I'm a fan. And let's go ahead. Uh, our host is going to be 192.168.1.166. Our username, let's say, is going to be Bob. Put our password in there. And now we need to go back over here to services, go to FTP, uh, go to settings, and then make sure we've got the right port there. Like so, put the port in and cl click Quick Connect. We're going to go ahead and allow this. So here we can see that Bob has access. Uh, to Bob's folder. That's who we're logged in as. We've also got access to files and FTP there. Uh, so if we come back over here, I'll tell you what, let's actually do this. Let's just kind of shrink this over like so. And then let's go back over here to shares. Uh, let's take a look at Bob. Uh, no, sorry. Let's go to user management, go to users, take a look at Bob and take a look at his shares here. So he's got read and write to his and he's got read and write to FTP, but he's only got read access to files. So let's I've got a picture here on my desktop. Cool, so he was able to write to Bob. So let's go to files. Now you can see I've already got some, some stuff in there. Now, he should not be able to write to files. And up here you can see critical file, uh, transfer error, operation not permitted. So that means our permissions here are working. So we go to FTP here. We're gonna drag that same picture over. And again, he was able to write to that folder. So we know that our permissions are working. So uh, let's go ahead and let's do Sam here. We're gonna do the same thing. Um, we're going to establish this in a new tab. Okay, so here I am logged in as Sam. And what we're gonna do is just grab a different uh, different image here. Oops. And what we're gonna do is go to files. Uh, Sam should have access uh, to uh, read files, but not write to it. So I'm gonna drag this file over. Well, let's go ahead and take a look uh, at Sam here. And let's see what, how I screwed that up. Oh, so Sam does have access to write to files, but not to FTP. So let's go to FTP. Sorry, I just had a moment there. Let's drag this over. Uh, file not permitted, that's good. Um, and then of course, um, Sam has access to write to Sam, like so. So now that we've kind of proven that our, our file permissions are working for individual users, I don't wanna go through this repetitive nonsense of showing you each individual user, but uh, what I do wanna do is actually show you a user, a FTP user here. We're gonna go ahead and log in there. We're gonna establish this one in a new tab. So here you can see that I've got access to all kinds of stuff. I've got access to all of the shared folders. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just grab a different, oops, well that, that is a picture I took. So let's go ahead and go over here to Bob uh, and let's just drag uh, this file over. Uh, that's good, so let's write it to files as well. And if we take a look at FTP user here and go uh, into their permissions, you can see that they do have access to everything. Like so, now let's go into Sam, let's upload this as well. And then Tim, one more after this, like so. And then Tracy, just like that. So there you go. There's a quick and easy way to set up uh, or to enable FTP in Open Media Vault 6 to uh, set up the shares and the users and assign the users to the shares pretty quickly. So hopefully uh, this video is helpful. I, I do also want to mention that this should also work in Open Media Vault 5, but uh, because Open Media Vault 6 is just right around the corner, I wanted to take an opportunity to make some content about this. So hopefully you found the video helpful. And if you did, do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. Really would help me out quite a bit. Also, don't forget to check out today's video sponsor down in the description down below. I do also want to give a big shout out to my channel members and my uh, Patreon members. I really do appreciate you guys. I do want to give a quick heads up though. Uh YouTube doesn't notify me or, or any creator when they get a channel member. So um, I will do everything I can to try to respond to individual members uh, as they come through. Um, but it's just one of those things I've got to check very regularly to see if I do have any new channel members. I have brought this up repeatedly with YouTube. So uh, yeah, I want to give a big shout out to my, my channel members, my patron members. Thank you guys. You guys are amazing. Really do appreciate you guys. Um, but with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.